My brothers and sisters, on tonight, I just welcome you into our Bible study, and I encourage you to join along with us as we dive again into the study of 1 Peter, chapter number 1. And on tonight, uh, we will be studying uh, from verses 17 through verses 25 uh, that I, in a manner that I've entitled as God's provision for the journey. So take the journey along with us through our short study on tonight and see what God has to say to us. Brothers and sisters, I, I am so excited to have you here with me on this midweek Bible study where we are coming together, uh, continuing our study on the uh, first Peter chapter number one. And tonight I have entitled this portion of our study as God gives provision for the journey. Now, I want to uh, let you know that we've tried, that's done something a little different. If you go to our website, taylormemorial.org, you will be able to find the study notes. Uh, they are made available for you. You can either print them out and, and go along with me throughout this study, or you may be able to look at them at, what, at your convenience at some other time. But I wanted to make the study notes available unto you. Uh, and it's left up to you to whether you want to uh, uh, go to that and pull them up and go with me. I would advise you to. It would make the study a whole lot easier for you as we go through it. So again, let us turn our Bible, our sword, to 1 Peter chapter number 1. And let us go to verse number 17. On the last couple of uh, a Wednesday night, you know we have already studied verses 1 through 16. So we're going to start at verse number 17 of 1 Peter. Now again, remember that 1 Peter uh, is dealing with Peter talking to a group of people who have been scattered. And we talked about them being scattered because of the persecution that was upon them uh, under the Roman rule. And sometimes God uses circumstances to cause the gospel to be able to reach a broader range of people. And we find that here in 1 Peter chapter number 1, how that uh, through, because of persecution, the gospel now is reaching Gal Galatha. Uh, uh, it, it's reaching uh, uh, other areas that it had not reached prior. And so we are now at verse number 17, and it begins in this wise. And it says this, Peter says this, And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judge it according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know, that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unforged love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure love, pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, 
which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth away. But the word of our Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now we here have here again Peter closing out, about to close out chapter number one as he has written this letter to those, as we have said, that have been scattered. And if you look again in verse number one, you will see what I'm referring to. Verse number one says this, Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ, to the, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatha, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethany, or Bethany. Now Peter is talking to these Jewish people who are escaping persecution that now have arrived in these different areas. And remember I told you earlier how that God sometimes uses persecution to cause his gospel to, be, to reach areas that it was not reaching prior. And so now the gospel is now in Pontus. The gospel is now in Galatha. The gospel is now being preached in Cappadocia. And the gospel is reaching Asia and Bethlehem. God is now allowing his gospel to touch other lives that had not once heard the gospel to be preached. But Peter is here now speaking to these, these believers. And Peter now is encouraging the believers here. Peter in this verse tells us according to the Net God Bible, these words, And if you address as Father the one who is impartially judges, according to each one's work. The Net Bible says it like this. Listen to what he says. He says, live out the time of your temporary residence here in reverence. Peter is trying to encourage the believers that they are only but strangers in this city or in this placement where they are right now. And he's trying to get them to understand that you're only here temporarily, but live in such a manner as to glorify God. If you look at the words that are in the King James verse, version, it says that in this way. He says, pass the time of your soul journey here in fear. That word fear is, is, has an under, uh, uh, a definition of reverence. Peter is not saying be afraid, but he's saying live out your time here in the fear of the Lord or in the reverence or the honor of God. Peter is saying because you call the Lord Father because he is your God. He says wherever you may be at this time in this season of your life, live it out in such a way that you honor God. My brothers and sisters, that should be a reminder to us as well. That wherever we may be upon the face of this earth, we who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior, we must live in such a manner as a pilgrim, as a foreigner, but yet we live it in such a manner that we glorify God. We've got to understand something about this. In John 17 and 14, there are some words that I want you to hear. John 17 and 14 says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of this world. Now, listen to John again. 
John is declaring that believers, these believers are not of this world. We are pilgrims traveling. Our home is not this earth. We are traveling from earth to glory. And John says again in 17 and 14, I have given them your word, Lord. And the world has hated them because they are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world. <clears throat> now, brothers and sisters, Jesus is saying, because I am not of this world, and you are my disciple, a child of God, you are not of this world. And because the world hated, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> because the world hated him, they're going to hate, hate us as well. So I want to remind you and emphasize to all of us that persecution is going to come because of who we represent. Because we are children of the King. We are heirs and joint heirs in Christ Jesus. But Peter tells us that regardless to whether we are strangers in a, in a foreign land, we still should live in such a manner as to honor God. We should live in such a manner that we let the world or, or those that are in that area with us know that we are a peculiar people. We are peculiar, uh, we are peculiar <coughs> simply because of the fact of who we are. We are peculiar because uh, we have now the name of Christ in our hearts. Uh, we have a new heart, a new mind, a, a new spirit. And, and now our hearts are heaven bound and not earthly. So the Bible uh, tells us that because they hated Christ, they shall also hate us. John 17 and 14 uh, is a reminder to us in that sense. We who are part of the body of Christ must truly recognize that we are held to a higher standard. Uh, that's something else that I, I've got to get you to understand through this verse. Where Peter tells them that we are to live uh, in the fear of God. Uh, we are held at a higher standard to a higher accountability. Because of the God we serve. So wherever we are, we are to live in such a manner that exalts God. The Colossians 3, I think it's 3 and 17 says, that in, in all that we do in word and deed, we do it as unto the Lord. Uh, that is setting a standard. That is letting the world know who we are and whose we serve. It is letting the world know that when we live our lives, we're living it out not only to, to um, look good in the presence of people, but to exalt our God. We are held at a high account, uh, standard. Therefore, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify God. Those of you that are coming on a little late, I, I want to inform you that if you want the study notes, you can go to the church website, and on the website you can find the study notes for tonight. As we look at verse number 18, we find these words where Peter again continues in the same line of writings. Verse number 18 says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers. Now my brothers and sisters, Peter is really trying to drive something home here. For Peter speaks in such a manner that he's trying to get the believers to understand that they are different and 
uh, they are now being held accountable because of their relationship with Jesus Christ. Peter says, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. Jesus is using, Peter is using an illustration of the things that are earthly and that which is spiritual. Peter says, you and I were not saved by corruptible things such as silver and gold. But you and I, were, we were saved by our Father, our Heavenly Father, who gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross. The Bible says that He stayed in the grave three days and three nights, but early Sunday morning, He got up with all power in His hand. And because He got up, we too, can get up again. The Net Bible says, in verse 18, in this manner, you know that from your empty way of life, inherited from your ancestors, you were ransomed, not by perishable things like silver and gold. Thank you for attending Taylor Memorial Wednesday Night Bible Study. We pray that you are truly blessed with the service on today as our pastor Sammy J. Hunter Jr. finishes up the second half of 1 Peter 1, 17-25. We ask that if you truly enjoy our service on today, that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. Now stay tuned as our pastor finishes up his sermon called God Builds Provision for the Journey. Israelites who have now been scattered, those believers that have now been scattered in these five different areas. He liberated them as he has even liberated us. Not with those things that perish. Man has placed so much value on silver and gold. Those things that can corrupt. But God demonstrates that his methods are higher than ours. In other words, we employ earthly methods, but God's are spiritually implemented. We are all guilty of this from time to time. God's actions here should show us how important it is to seek direction from him before we move forward with our decisions. My brothers and sisters, Peter is speaking volume when he tells uh, the people who have now been scattered and even to those of us that are opening up his word that we have not been redeemed by that which is corruptible, but by that which is incorruptible. Peter wants us to realize that we have been saved by something far more valuable than whatever we can find here on earth. God's ways are different from our ways. Peter continues in verse number 19 and he says it this way. In the King James Bible he says, But by precious blood, like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb, namely Christ. But with the precious blood, that was the Net Bible, the King James Bible says, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The Message Bible puts it this way, he paid with Christ's sacrifice, sacrifice blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. Peter is here making it clear how that you and I have gained salvation. Peter is making it clear to the, those that in Christians that are now scattered wherever they may be at that time and wherever you may be right now. Peter is making it clear that you and I 
have our salvation through Christ Jesus, that spotless Lamb of God. As you look in Exodus 12 and verses 3 through verses number 6, we would find how that the Israelites were to find a lamb without spot and without blemish. Or they could get a goat, a young goat without spot or with ble without blemish. And they were to kill that lamb or that goat in remembrance of their redemption from, is from Egypt. The verses goes something like this. If you don't mind, he says it this way, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house, and if that house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. My brothers and sisters, a lamb without blemish recalls the Israelites' redemption from slavery in Egypt. And the blood of the Passover lamb, we must always remember that Jesus Christ was our spotless lamb. Old Testament sacrifices were types, symbols foreshadowing the coming of Christ, God's ultimate Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians. 5 and 7 says, Purge and out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. As we look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 7, you find that word, these words, Purge out therefore the old leaven. Leaven was a representation of sin. So therefore, as you and I come together on first Sunday, and we eat unleavened bread, it is the same principle that is being spoken of here in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. We eat unleavened bread because leaven represents sin in the scriptures. And this is what the Bible is sharing with us is that Christ came to, to pay the price for our sins. Christ is our redemption. He is that scapegoat. He's that sacrificial lamb for you and I. And so Peter, in this verse uh, that we have just read of 19, Peter is making it clear that it was by the precious blood of Christ, our lamb, that was sacrificed on the cross, that you and I have salvation. Again, my brothers and sisters, if you want the notes, just go to the website and go to study notes and you'll be able to print, pull out the, the study notes for tonight. God's vicarious act, and that word vicarious is a Latin word meaning substitute or deputy. It is the root or origin of the English word vocar. And the word vocar means anyone acting in the person of. Now, my brothers and sisters, think about this. When you think about the word vocarious or vocar, you recognize instantly that Christ is that one. 
that has now stepped in place of us. He is now representing us for our sins. He has, he has taken our sins off of us. He is our ransom and he paid the price for your sins and for my sins. And so Peter is driving the nail home to the people that have now been scattered abroad because of persecution. Remember in the previous verses, Peter had told them, um, yeah, Peter had told the, people, the believers, he says, now, regardless that you are foreigners in a strange land, remember that the charge is that we live our lives in the reverence of Almighty God. Is that happening today? Are we as believers living our lives in such a manner that we are honoring God today? Uh, have we forgotten the sacrifice that was paid for us on Calvary? Peter is not only speaking to those that have been scattered in the past, but Peter is speaking to the church today, and he's saying to you and I that Christ paid such a great price, a great sacrifice for us to have life and have life more abundantly. We should be living our lives regardless to whether we are strangers in a foreign land. We should be living it in such a manner that we honor God. Peter is speaking not only to the church of the past, but he's speaking to the church now of the present. His words are, are resident unto us even right now. Excuse me, my sinuses are bothering me. Now again, that word Bokar has a meaning of anyone acting in person of. It's truly a spiritual act. This, this whole act of Christ being our vicarious lamb is truly a spiritual action on behalf of God's love for all mankind. Think about that. It's an act that demonstrates God's love for you and I. Of how he would send his only begotten son to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. As we look at that verse one more time, it says again in the King James, but with his precious blood. Of Christ. Now remember, the blood is, is necessary. The blood, the Bible, Old Testament scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so the Bible says, by the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, remember when Jesus was on the cross, and there was a, a, a normalcy uh, that the the Roman soldiers would, would do in trying to figure out, find out if the person who was now the, being hung on the cross was dead, they would pierce him in their side. And then the, if blood and water would come down, they would know that the person was dead. Now the Bible says that they also would break the legs of the individuals to hurry the death. But because Christ was already dead, when they pierced him in the side, the Bible says blood and water came down. So they did not break his legs because he was already dead. And it's by that precious blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary that we are now saved from our sins. The remission of our sins have been paid through the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ on Calvary. There is something else I want to share with you. The way of God or the ways of God are far above our comprehension. One, of course, is his vicarious act. It can only be understood or even believed spiritually. We can't rationalize this vicarious act of how that you and I are saved by the death of one person of Jesus Christ. It has to be believed spiritually. 
You just can't sit here and say, okay, I, it, it, it sounds okay, but you really can't comprehend it except you believe. It, it is something that has to be believed in one's heart. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again on the third day morning. He says, believe. And you have to believe it spiritually because you can't comprehend it with your mind. It's uncomprehensible of how one man could die for the sins of the world. So this vicarious act of Jesus Christ is above your thoughts and my thoughts and above my comprehension and your comprehension. It can only be received spiritually. Romans 5, verses 2, 12 through 21 speaks on that vein. So in your own time, I would that you would turn to Romans 12, chapter 5, and look at verses 12 through 21, and, and, and you will find some very important truths about how that through Christ's blood, of how that through one man, we are saved, how that the first Adam, and what the first Adam could not do, the second Adam was able to do. The second Adam being Christ. The first Adam being the man Adam. The creation Adam. And the second being Jesus Christ. How that he is able to fulfill the price that was necessary that man may be reunited back to the Father. There's something else I want you to think about in Isaiah Chapter number 55, verses 8 through 9. You will find these words. For your thoughts are not, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are than your thoughts. I place that scripture there just to show us that you and I with our feeble minds cannot always comprehend the ways of God. We can't reason the ways of God, the, how that God is able to do things. All we must do is believe that if God said it, he'll perform it. For the word declares that to be true. If God said it, the word says, shall he not perform it? Isaiah again, 55 and 8 and 9 says, his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are, are, are higher than our thoughts. We can't comprehend it. We can't always understand it. But we must believe it. The Bible says we walk by faith and what? Not by sight. Peter again is encouraging the, the Christians that have been scattered throughout these five regions of the known world at that time. He was encouraging them to let them know that they are there to serve God, that wherever they are, they need to walk in the fear of God and to remember how they are now saved. They were saved through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Again, the title of this this uh, uh, study on tonight is God gives provision for the journey. And this is what Peter is telling them. He's, Peter is encouraging them to understand that wherever you are, he's there. That same salvation that you received in Jerusalem is that same salvation you have now that you're in Asia. That same God that you received in, in, in Jerusalem is that same God that you ought to serve whether you in Pontus. My brothers and sisters, you and I must understand that wherever we are, Christ is. 
For he declares to you and I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Peter is encouraging them to understand their salvation. He's reassuring them of their salvation. As we look continuously in the word of the Lord. As we look at verses number 20 and 21, we find these words. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you? 21 says, Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God? Let me give you the, the translation from the Message Bible. The Message Bible uh, states verses 20 and 21 in this way. And this was no afterthought. Now brothers and sisters, I'm going to stop there. The King James says, for a day. The Message Bible says, no afterthought. You and I must understand that God had already planned this thing out. Because if God is the God of the present, the past, and the future, or if you want to say it right, if God is the God of the past, the present, and the future, He is aware of everything that is going to transpire before it even happens. And this is one of the glorious things that Peter is sharing with the believers that have been scattered and Peter is even sharing with us right now. Peter is really saying God already knows what you're going through, what you've been through, and what you're going to go through. He says God has already planned this thing out. Nothing catches God off guard. Peter is saying keep your hand in the winding wheel. Because your God has this thing already worked out. Again, the Message Bible says, and this was no afterthought. Which lets me know that God knows every step that I'll take. God already knows it in advance. God has already planned and planned my path out for me. What then if God has planned it and if God is aware of everything I'm going through, then it is left up to me to search the will of God for my life so that I will walk in the will of God every day of what? Of my life. Look what he says again in the Message Bible. Even though it has only lately at the end of the ages become publicly known. In other words, God had already preordained this. God had already planned this out. But the world did not know it until the coming of Christ. The world did not have full understanding until the coming of Christ. It was Christ who fulfilled the promises. And it is Christ who is now making these promises possible. It was when he came and he lived for 33 years and he died that third day morning, got up on that third day morning with all power in his hand that you and I were able to understand and to receive the promises that have thus far come. And so Peter is saying it was not until now. The Message Bible continues and says God already always know, knew he was going to do this for you. I, have to, I had to put the message Bible in there because it encourages you. And this is what Peter is doing. He's encouraging the believers as he's encouraging us. Again, the message Bible says, God always knew he was going to do this for you. We ought to shout hallelujah for that. God already knew it. That he was going to plan uh, our salvation for us. He already knew it before the foundation of the world. Remember the previous verses. He preordained for ordained. He was not caught off guard. It wasn't an afterthought. That assures us that God already knew. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That ought to give us uh, uh, some encouragement.
Testament to let us know that God cared enough about us that he preordained his way of escape for us. Hallelujah. Your Messiah, whom God then raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God, that you know you have a future in God. How many of you know you got a future in God? Glory to God. I'm so, I'm so glad of that, that we have a future in God through Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us and assures us that no man can come unto the Father except who? through the Son. We have a future in, Christ, in God through Jesus Christ. And that's what the Message Bible says, that you know you have a future in God. Bless his name. God's plan of salvation was in place before the foundation of the world. This should be a resounding yes for every believer because uh, in that we are able to see God's plan of salvation in place in advance. He knew we needed a way of escape. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. Peter is encouraging those that have been scattered even as he's encouraging the church today to understand despite what you're going through, despite where you may be, despite if you're in a foreign land, despite if you are a pilgrim traveling, Peter is saying wherever you are, whatever you're going through in your life, live it out in such a manner that God receives that God receives the glory. And my brothers and sisters, as we have closed out uh, first, the cha first chapter of 1 Peter, I pray that you have been blessed and that you have been encouraged to recognize and realize that God does provide provisions for us in this journey as we travel through our lives. Each day God gives us just what we need. As Peter was encouraging those believers who had been scattered, Peter was also encouraging the church of today to realize that Christ paid an ultimate sacrifice and that God knows where we are and that God gives us what we need as we travel along life's journey. So trust God today, believe Him, and seek His face find out what your provisions may be from God. This we believe, this we trust. Be blessed in the Lord. Amen. For attending Taylor Memorial Baptist Church Wednesday night Christian Bible study, we pray that you were truly blessed on today as our pastor Sammy J. Hunter Jr. finishes up his final series of 1 Peter 1 entitled God gives provisions for the journey ahead. Life could be a bit hectic at some times. So Pastor Sammy J. Hunter Jr. created these theories to help us through these trying moments. If you would like to purchase some DVDs, feel free to join us on www.tmbchurch.org. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. We can't wait to fellowship with you all again. Don't forget, tune in on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m.